Hey guys, and welcome to another Technology Guru video. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use ScreenFlow 6. So all the way from beginning to end, this is a complete beginner's guide on how to get started with using ScreenFlow. And this is the newest version, just released ScreenFlow 6.0. So some new features, I've got a video on that. If you wanna know the new features, I'll have the link down below. But I'm going to take you from beginning, creating a project, all the way to the nitty gritty details of how to edit and add effects and things like that. That within ScreenFlow to make your screencast look awesome. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to see here when you open up ScreenFlow is an option to go up to File and then go to New. And then when you go to File New, you're going to see this option come available to you here. You're going to see New Recording, which will, as you can see here, you can see where you can choose what you want to record. So you can record the desktop. You choose whatever d desktop you want to record from. So for me, I have three different displays that I can choose to record from. I always choose this one here because that's always the desktop that I use to record from. If you have a really big desktop, I would recommend not using it to record on because when you export the video, if it's above 1920 by 1080, which is 1080p, it's going to look a little distorted or a little stretched. So remember that when creating your videos. Next, you're going to see something that says record video from. This will allow you to record video from a camera that you may have mounted on your desktop, or it will allow you like what I'm doing to record from your webcam, the Logitech camera, which I have mounted on top of my display now. Next, you're going to see something that says record audio from. Now, in this specific case for me, I record my audio in a separate program, which I would recommend you do as well. Well, if you have a program like Adobe Audition or Audacity, which is a free program you can use as well, you can record your audio there, edit it, make it sound really good, and then export that audio clip into ScreenFlow to sync up with your video, and it just sounds better and makes your screencast even that much better. So that's how you record the audio. Once you click that there, you'll be able to monitor how much audio input you're getting, if your levels are right, and then choose what audio source you want to use to record from. And then you can also select this option here, which shows you can record computer audio. The next page will allow you to set the desktop frame rate. I always leave that at automatic and don't mess with any of this stuff here. Next, you're going to see something that says new document. Now this allows you to create a brand new document to import video and audio into. So you're not actually recording anything, you're just bringing in video and audio clips to put together to create a new screencast. So when you do that, Always choose 1920 by 1080, unless you have a special case to where you're trying to create a screencast of a specific size, but I always recommend doing at least 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080, and then click the little paper icon here at the bottom, and then as you can see here, that will create a blank template for you to start from. So this is a great segue into this portion of the tutorial. So once you've decided to record, or you've decided to create a new screencast, which is what you see here, I'm going to take you around the UI and show you what everything does. Now, this down here is going to be your timeline. Everything you see here from left to right on the bottom of your screen is your timeline. You can click and hold this here and drag up or drag down to increase or decrease the size of your timeline. What I normally like to do, because I normally have a lot of different clips and things to adjust in the timeline, is I'll actually zoom out with the mouse wheel, or you can just zoom in and out a different way with the keyboard, is I'll zoom out to about that size right there and then drag the timeline up a little more and that allows allows me to be able to edit and do more fine-tuned details within the screencast as opposed if I had it decreased way down here. So you can adjust that by dragging it up and down. The next thing I want to show you is this here, the little crop icon on the left-hand side. This will allow you to adjust the canvas size. It'll also allow you to adjust the color of the canvas. So as you can see here, if I click the little color icon there, I can go here and select a different color for my canvas. Now, I'm not going to do that because normally you want it to be black or white dependent upon what you're trying to do or accomplish with your video. You can go here and select this option here which will allow you to record a specific area or region of the screen. And then once you have all of these settings the way you want, click the green check mark there and it will apply those settings. As you can see, I now have a green canvas. We'll just leave it as green because it'll stand out and it'll allow you guys to see a little better as to what I'm doing in the tutorial. So again, timeline here, 
adjust canvas by clicking the little crop icon here. The next part of the timeline that I want to show you is the control panel here. You're going to see a rewind, a play button, and a fast forward button. And then to the right of that, you're going to see a timestamp or how far you are within the project. So if I go ahead and minimize this and go back over to my already completed project, you're going to see the different things I have in my timeline. So if I go here and drag all the way here, you're going to see here in the timeline that I am now six minutes and 59 seconds into my screencast. So that will always show you there. And again, you can press the play button or you can press or click the space bar on your keyboard to play the screencast and get it to where you want it to go. Now you're going to see this little red line right here that I'm dragging left to right. This little guy right here is called your playhead. Okay, you can drag him left, you can drag him right. Basically, this is a quick way to navigate throughout your screencast to get to a specific section of your screencast. Now, with that being said, a lot of times you're not going to be able to see exactly where you are because you're too far zoomed out. In order to zoom in on a specific area of the timeline, you need to go down here to where you see the little magnifying glass, the plus and minus symbols, and then drag this over to the right. This will increase the amount of zoom you have on your timeline. This is great because normally you're going to have to drag the playhead specific areas on the timeline and actually edit really fine points within your screencast. Now, talking about fine points within a screencast, you are going to want to select specific portions of the timeline. So let's go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. And if I want to select a clip, I basically click on it. If I want to select multiple clips, I will just click and hold my mouse and drag over both of those clips. And as you can see, they're highlighted yellow. If a clip is highlighted yellow, that means that clip, that specific clip is selected and you can click and hold whatever selected clip you have and you can move those around on the timeline. But remember, if you move a clip over another clip, it will automatically create a transition. So you want to make sure when those transitions are played back in the video that those transitions are actually smooth and they make your screencast look good. Now, if you want to edit those specific transitions, you can right click right here where the two clips meet and all of these different options here are going to be different transition animations. The one that I like to use is one called plane as well as swipe. Those two to me look the best when creating demos and things like that for tutorials. So let's go ahead and go to plane. And then now when I play back this video, you're going to see there, it's going to swipe and transition and flip over. Now, the longer that you want the transition, you need to overlap the clips more. If you want the transition to be shorter, you would want them to overlap less. And again, in order to edit then tra that transition again, you would just right click and then select the transition you want. And then you could even go up to show transition inspector, which will then bring up this little guy here that allows you to do even more editing when it comes to that transition. So you can test and preview a transition, and then you could even go here and adjust the animation even further within the transition inspector. So that's a little bit about transitions, a little bit about clips. Again, select and hold your mouse, drag over the clips you wanna select, and make sure they're yellow, highlighted yellow, and that means they're selected. Also, another thing you may be noticing within this specific screencast here, I have something down here that looks like a bunch of green squiggly lines, that's going to be an audio wave file. This right here that says screen recording, that's going to be an actual screen recording file. So now that we know all about the timeline, all about how to maneuver around the timeline, let's go on up to our tools up here in the right hand side of the screen and show you what we can do within a screencast. Right here, the first tab is going to say video. This is going to be where you add your zoom in and zoom out effects. When you create screencasts, you're going to want to be able to zoom into specific areas of the screen to get more detail about that specific area, or you may be talking about a specific point that you want to zoom into. So what you would do is you would select the screen recording clip that you want to zoom in on, like I have this one here selected, and then what you would do is drag your playhead to where you want to zoom in, and then what you would do is click the video tab and then go to action. And it's got a little plus symbol right there next to it. So go to the plus action right there. And if we notice right here on our timeline, we now have a little yellow icon that came above on top of that clip. So what you're going to want to do now is drag this little scale 
slider here, which will allow you to zoom in or zoom out. So we'll go ahead and zoom in a whole bunch just so you can kind of see what it does. And then if we go back and play that clip, as it goes by that zoom, you'll see it now zooms in on that specific area of that clip. Now, if we want the zoom to last longer, if we want the animation to be slower, what we would do is just click on that little yellow icon and drag it to the right. This right here will now make this a much slower transition when zooming in. Again, it all depends on what kind of work you're doing, and basically it's a case by case. So that's how you zoom in. And again, you can rotate, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. Also, you can change the opacity of the screen that you're working with. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do here within the video tab. So I'm not going to go too much deeper into that. That's pretty self-explanatory. You can zoom in, zoom out, rotate, do all of that within the video tab. And then again, if you need to move that, you can move this anywhere on that specific clip and it will then adjust where it zooms in and zooms out. So pretty self-explanatory. The next one I'm going to talk about is the one to the right of the video tab is going to be your audio editing tools. Now, in order to edit an audio clip, you obviously have to select an audio waveform, which I've done right here. So now that I've selected that audio waveform, I can then go up to the audio tab and I can adjust the master volume. So this volume slider here is going to adjust the master volume of whatever audio clip you have selected. So if you want to increase the volume, slide to the right. If you want to decrease the volume, slide to the left. If you want to mute the volume altogether on this specific clip, check the mute audio. And as you can see, this is now grayed out down here on your timeline. So we'll go ahead and deselect that because I do not want to mute that audio. Now, some people ask me all the time, what does the word ducking mean? So when you're doing video editing, the word ducking means that you're going to reduce the volume of all other clips while this one is playing to a specific amount. So let's say you've got background music and then you've got video playing in the background, but you want the background music to be very low. So what you would do is you would select the audio of the video clip and you would duck everything else or you would select ducking and decrease the background music or the music bed to be 10, 15% so you can hear what's going on in the video, but you can also slightly hear the music audio bed as well. And then another feature, new feature in ScreenFlow 6 is being able to click the drop down arrow here next to audio mix and actually adjust specific channels. So if this audio was recorded in say three, four, five different channels, you've got multiple channels coming in, you can actually adjust the specific audio channels separately. And one thing you could do is right click on the audio clip, go to extract audio, and then you could actually extract specific channels to adjust their volume as opposed to adjusting all of the channels at once in one whole fatal swoop. So that's basically all you need to know about audio. You can add effects like presence effects and things like that. But what I've found with the effects that you can add in ScreenFlow is none of them are too effective when it comes to creating screencast and unless you're doing something really special as far as a video. So that's all you need to know with audio. The next tab I'm going to show you is this tab here, which is video motion. This is a new feature added in ScreenFlow 6. This basically allows you to apply animations, three specific animations actually. So I'm going to drag in an image here from the media bin. As you can see that little image there, go back to the video motion and I'm going to show you a little bit about what you can do. So if we go to action here and add a video motion, we can actually go here and choose different effects. We got gravity, spring, and pulse. The one I like best is pulse. So we'll choose pulse. And then what that allows us to do now is I'm going to drag this a little further in the timeline. If we go back and play this, you're going to see it pulsate back and forth. So basically with the video motion, you can add three specific effects. Pulse, spring, and gravity. Again, you can play with those. You can adjust the way the animation works all here on the video motion tab. The next tab I want to talk about is the screen recording tab. So this tab here allows you to select a specific screen recording clip and adjust specific things. So if you want to show the mouse pointer, you can do that. If you want to deselect that, that means the mouse pointer will not be shown. Do you want to have a specific click effect? So that means like if you want there to be like a little circle pulsate up whenever you click on the screen to showing people where you're clicking, you can do that here under click effect. Do you want the pointer to be a circle, a circle dark, a square? Again, this is basically ways for you to adjust how people are seeing the screencast and what they see to help them follow along with what you're doing. Do you want there to be a specific sound on click, what that volume needs to be? You can do that all here within the screen recording tab. Again, if you want to show all of your keyboard strokes, so if you're typing something on the screen, you want your audience to see what you're typing, you select keyboard, go to show all keys, and that will show the audience what you're typing on the screen there. It'll show it, it'll display it on your screencast. 
The next tab that I want to talk about is this guy here. It's called the callouts. Now the callouts are fantastic because you can do so much with the callout. Now with anything that you're adding in ScreenFlow, you just select the clip you want to add it to and then go to the plus action up here. Now, as you can see here, this call out is going to be for your mouse cursor. So if you want to zoom in on your mouse cursor, add a call out, as you can see, it's come up here on the timeline. And then we can actually change the opacity of the background to be whatever we want it to be. Normally, I leave it around 60 to 75%. I could even blur the background. So say you don't want people to see like personal information that you're typing or you got bank account information on your screen, you can actually blur a specific area so we got mouse cursor then we have foreground window and then we have freehand which is what i use a lot so you can choose whether if you want a circular or a rectangle selection tool and then go down here and select a specific area of the screen and it will make that become visible and everything else will be blurred out and in the background very very transparent so if you want to call out specific areas of a screencast go to the call out section go to the call out tab and do it there that's how you're always going to call something out bring attention to something on the screencast a great great tool and obviously there's more stuff you can do you can drag the zoom you know, the zoom slider here to zoom in, zoom out. You can actually add a border, a colored border, add a shadow to what you're calling out. Again, play around with all of that and see kind of the different effects that you might want to achieve within your specific screencast. The next tab I want to talk about is this guy here. It's called Touch Callout. I'm not going to look too much into this now. I'll do a specific video just on this tab later. But basically, if you've recorded an iOS device, which you can do within ScreenFlow, go to this option here where it says Touch Callout. And when you're recording an iOS device, it will actually show your audience who's watching the screencast where you're touching on the device. This is great because normally you're like, well, touch this, touch that. But unless they can actually see like a visual cue of where you're touching, that's kind of hard. So you can go under touch call out, add an action, and it brings up a little circle here and you can drag to where you're actually touching on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that now. Go ahead and undo that one more time. The next section we're going to see is the annotations. Basically, this is where you can draw like circles, squares, arrows, pointing at specific things on a screencast. So if we select a specific area, screen recording on the screencast, we can go to annotations, go to the plus sign here, and then we can actually draw out, say, an arrow pointing at a specific area on the screen. And again, you can actually adjust the size, length, dimensions, rotation, all of that. You can even go over here to the slider, change the thickness, so now you got an arrow, drag it around. You know, you may want to call attention to a specific area on the screen. That's how you do that with annotations. Obviously, you can change the color of that. You can change the thickness, the opacity, bunch of different stuff. Play around with that. You can do much more than arrows. You can do squares, circles, things like that. And you can also add intro animations and extra animations or outro animations for those as well. So that's a great, great feature to utilize. I'm going to go ahead and undo all of that now. And the next tab is going to be the text tab. Pretty self-explanatory here. If you want to add text onto your document, click the little addition symbol there. You're going to see a text box come available to you. Double click in that box, which will allow you to type whatever you want to type there. And then as with any other video editor, you can select the font once you're done typing and change the font style here. Change the size of that font change the alignment center left right aligned change the color you could even change the backdrop color uh, do all of that good stuff again the text tab is pretty self-explanatory go in there edit some text see what you can do there with your screencast and then the last tab that i'm going to show you is something called the media library this my friends is where you bring in your clips to screen screen flow so if you have some video some images some audio you want to bring in to edit within your screencast go to the media library go to add media just like that search your files on your desktop on your computer select the files that you want to add to this screencast project and then click open or double click and that will then add them to your media library so so much stuff right screenflow is such a great application again i have a link below where you can install download the newest version of screenflow and i use this to edit produce all of my tutorial videos and it's just continually getting better and better if however you have any questions that were not covered in this video put them in the comment section below i'll get to those as quickly as possible if this video helped you slap that like button share it with your friends and family and as always guys thank you so much for watching my videos and i will see you guys next time